Welcome back everyone, I hope you're having a great day, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at three dividend paying companies that Jim Cramer believes are by now if the Fed leaves interest rates unchanged at this week's meeting. From his latest episode of Mad Money, he believes that investors should start thinking about buying some industrial and energy names if the Fed keeps rates unchanged. And if you think as I do, that the Fed will keep the fires going, you'll want to own a steel stock, or heavy machinery play, or a chemical company. And another direct quote from his episode is that, these are the kind of companies that thrive when economies around the world are growing, and that's exactly what I expect. So Kramer believes a strong report over this next week, he believes the Fed will not change rates, they'll keep the fire going, and he's focusing and telling investors to take a look at some industrial and energy names. And within this article, he gives out a few different companies that all pay out a dividend every single year to their shareholders that we're going to go over in this episode. But before we jump into stock number one, I'm going to ask you to please hit that like button and subscribe. I'm the Gen Z Investor, and every single day we talk about the stock market, going over different stocks you can buy, and any major market news. So please hit that like button, subscribe for the daily videos, and the first company we're going to go over today is a major player in the energy sector, and that is ticker CVX, which is Chevron. They currently trade right around $108 per share, and on the one-year chart, the company is up by 20.75%. This is a mega cap company worth over $208 billion. They're currently trading with a forward PE ratio of only 19.2 and a massive dividend yield just below 5%. So of course throughout 2020 when the oil market collapsed, Chevron was harshly impacted. But we can see from the low points over the past year, they have seen a nice rebound in their total revenue. During the hard times in 2020, their quarterly revenue dipped to below $16 billion. But we can see over the past three quarters, they have been fighting back to just under $24 billion, $24.8, and then in the last quarter, they achieved over $31 billion in quarterly revenue, and the company is coming back stronger than ever as oil prices continue to rise. And if we take a look at their latest investor presentation, they are market leading in the energy sector. They have strong financials, and in terms of dividend, they actually raised their dividend over the past year when many of their competitors did see a dividend cut. And Chevron actually has the leading balance sheet when compared to their peers in terms of net debt ratio. And even though the price of oil has been rising as of late, there's still a lot of uncertainty of where it's going to go over the next few years. And in their latest presentation, they showed both a downside from 2021 to 2025 when the price sits around $40 and an upside when it's at $60. And we can see, even if oil drops to $40 over the next four years on average, the company will still have a net debt peak right around 35%, still be able to maintain their dividend, and we can see their cash flow from operations will be able to handle their debt level, their capital expenditures, and that current dividend rate. And as well, we can see that if oil prices continue to rise and remain strong over the next four to five years, at an average of $60, they're going to have massive cash flows from operations, they're going to pay down their debt, focus on their capital expenditures, and will have around $25 billion of excess cash over the next five years, which is a very strong sign. And in the energy sector, even though 2020 pretty much decimated all the smaller companies, not only did they maintain their dividend, but they grew it, and over the past 16 years, they've been growing their dividend at a CAGR above 7%, which is a very strong sign. And if we take a look at that dividend right now, it currently has a yield just below 5%, which is massive in our current market environment when companies are trading at all-time highs and it's getting harder and harder to find some nice, high-yielding, safe companies on the market right now. And of course, if you do take a look at that payer ratio, coming at 95%, that is high and very alarming, but you have to remember that their earnings were crushed throughout 2020, and if the company can recover, like we're seeing right now, and over the next 12 to 24 months, get their earnings back up to pre-pandemic levels, this overall payout ratio will see a decline. And over the past five years, their dividend CAGR sits at 4%. And jumping over to Simply Safe Dividends, even for a big energy company with all the risk of oil right now, they still have Chevron ranked as safe coming in at a 65. So that means over the shorter term, we're not really expecting a dividend cut to come from Chevron over the next 12 months. 
And for a company that has a market leading balance sheet, it's one of the strongest names in the industry. They've proven that throughout the tough times in 2020, they could still maintain and grow their dividend. I think that now oil prices continue to rise, Chevron will perform very well going forward, and definitely an interesting name to take a look at when it was one of the big energy companies included in Kramer's list. And now we're going to jump over into stock number two, and it's ticker CAT, which is Caterpillar. They trade for $219 per share, and of course, this is the massive heavy machinery company. I'm sure we all know their products. If you drive by any construction site pretty much anywhere in North America, you will see Caterpillar equipment being used. And over the past year, the company is up 81%, and that's because they did take a hard hit in 2020, and from that low point, they have continued to grow exponentially. Over the past five years, they have seen some nice long-term capital appreciation, right around 190%, and the company has a market cap at $120.9 billion. They currently trade with a forward PE ratio, right around 22, and a dividend yield just at 2%. And we can see that now might be a nice opportunity to actually buy the dip on Caterpillar. On the one month chart, the stock has fallen over 10%. So recently there has been some downside pressure on the stock. And although it is up drastically over the past year, a 10% decline is definitely worth taking a look at if you want some exposure to the heavy machinery and industrial sector of the market. And if we jump over to this company's latest investor presentation, in the first quarter of 2021, they performed extremely well. Their revenue grew 12% year over year. They maintained an operating margin right around 15.3%. Their EPS grew 40% over the prior year. And their adjusted profit per share came in at 74% growth as well. So similar to Chevron, the company has seen some recoveries over the lows back in 2020. And they have future expansion and they believe their services will double by 2026, reaching a total of $28 billion on an annual metric. So going forward, the company still does believe they have a lot of room to grow and expand their service sector over the next five years. And if we take a look to their quarterly income statement, we can see similar to Chevron, the company did see a decline in revenue over the two quarters throughout 2020, but starting to end the year and into 2021, we have seen somewhat of a recovery and now up to close to $12 billion in total revenue for the past quarter. So of course, both companies we have started with are still below pre-pandemic levels, but hopefully over the next two, three years, they will continue to grow, surpass the pre-pandemic levels, and reach new all-time highs. And of course, because we're talking about dividend-paying companies, we're going to take a look at that 2% current yield. A pair ratio around 45% is actually very low and very sustainable for an industrial company, and their five-year dividend CAGR sits at 6%. And jumping over to Simply Safe Dividends, this company comes in at a 93. It's considered very safe and extremely, extremely unlikely that we see Caterpillar cut that dividend anytime soon. And this was a dividend aristocrat. They did lose that status. They did not cut the dividend, but they did maintain the same payout for a few quarters past the annual mark back throughout 2020. So although the company has not cut their dividend, they did maintain the same level for a while, so technically not a dividend aristocrat anymore, but we can see over the long term some consistent dividend growth year after year. So Caterpillar is the second industrial type company included in Kramer's article and was featured on Mad Money. And now we're going to jump in to the third and final company we're going to take a look at today, and that is ticker PXD, which is Pioneer Natural Resources. They trade for $162 per share. They're up by 68% on the one year chart and are currently worth just below $40 billion and trade with a forward PE ratio at 14.9. And they do offer a slight dividend with a yield at 1.4%. And currently, this company has seen some downward momentum as well over the shorter term. And on the one week chart, they have fallen by 5%. So this is another type of industrial materials like company that if you want some exposure to an industry that most investors don't own, definitely a name to take a look at. And again, another company mentioned on Mad Money. And we can see they operate as an independent oil and gas exploration company in the Permian Basin in West Texas. So an American brand operating within the United States right now. And we can see that like all the others, 
From the low point throughout 2020, their revenue did go down to around $1.1 billion in the quarter, but from that low point, each and every quarter after, they have seen some major expansion to over $3 billion to start out 2021. And taking a look at their investor presentation, they believe they can return a total of around a 10% total return to their investors year after year over the long term. They have plans to reduce their debt, grow their cash flow at around 5% per year, and over the long term, they believe their dividend will continue to grow at the base rate, plus some variable payments added on as well. And we can see that this company is forecasting $23 billion of total free cash flow over the next five years. They made a recent acquisition of DoublePoint, which will add around $5 billion to their incremental free cash flow. And in total, from 2021 through 2026, $23 billion of estimated free cash flow for this material, industrial, and oil company. So overall, this company does do a bunch of different operations. And because I'm not going to deep dive into them, I'll keep it short and sweet. Industrial oil type company operating within Texas that has seen a rebound in their revenue as of late. And we can see currently operating within the United States and they serve 31 million barrels of oil and 17 million barrels of NGLs over the past year. And taking a look, their overall balance sheet is improving. They have a focus on reducing their debt level to 0.75x and they pay a base dividend at $2.24, but they also offer a variable dividend on top of that throughout the years as well. So although this company isn't very traditional, offering the same dividend year after year with slight increases, they pay out a base dividend that does grow over the long term by adding in some variable dividends as well each and every year. And taking a look, the overall breakdown of this company, they are the leader relative to their peers. So when I'm going over these random companies I'm sure you've probably never heard of before, the three brands we've run over are industry leading. I'm not picking peer number eight, number nine, or number 10, or the random companies. Taking a look at break-even prices, which is a very important aspect of this industry, they have the lowest. The company can break even at a cheap price relative to their competitors, which shows a great sign for investors in PXD. And taking a look at that dividend, the yield comes in at right around 1.4%, so nothing too drastic at this current level, but we can see their payout ratio is only at 20.5% of their net income, so it's extremely low, very, very sustainable, and that five-year dividend kegger is not accurate because the company offers variable dividends, you are going to get a fluctuating rate year after year. The base dividend stays the same at that $2.24, but the variable added on top of that will fluctuate depending on the company's cash flow in that certain year. So definitely another interesting company I'm sure many investors watching this video today have never heard of before, and I think all three of the brands in this episode are definitely worth some research into. Jim Cameron believes that if the Fed leaves rates unchanged, this type of sector, these type of companies will benefit as economies all around the world continue to grow and definitely worth taking a look at for your own portfolio. Remember, Jim Cramer, although he's on TV, he's not a true financial advisor, neither am I, so make sure you do your own research, speak to a qualified professional before making any true investment decisions, do your own research in the companies, learn the financials before picking which ones you may want to add for your portfolio. But before we wrap it up, I want to thank you for watching this video to the end. Of course, we took a look at three dividend paying companies from Jim Cramer's latest episode of Mad Money, where he believes the energy and industrial brands will succeed over the next few years. So thank you for watching to the end. Please hit that like button and subscribe, and I will see you in tomorrow's video.